because this is about uh, file handling <clears throat> with one group of us. I finished this uh, question. Uh, this looks a bit tricky, but uh, <clears throat> nothing much actually. Uh, first, I will show you and then uh, we'll give the chance to you, right? We'll uh, develop this uh, step by step. So you can see <clears throat> different algorithms can be used to manipulate data. Email.txt contains a list of email addresses. Now, first of all, let me send you the uh, files. Let me send you all the, the whole folder, including the paper. Download and extract it. Right, uh, I'll give you one minute. Can you quickly download and extract? Right, okay. Pratum, uh, we are doing uh, question number three. I think I did it uh, with one group, maybe your group. But uh, let's do it again because the other group didn't do it, right? <clears throat> right, so email.txt contains a list of uh, email addresses. Now, if you open that, you will see. Uh, you have some email addresses like this. And some of the email addresses are not complete because they don't have the at sign. Okay. Mm. Write a program to implement these requirements. The code must uh, check each email address, each email address, and ensure it contains that symbol. Write email addresses that do not contain at symbol to an uh, error.txt file. So what we had to do is we had to check each and every email and see whether they have an at sign. Uh, if it doesn't have an at sign, we had to write it uh, to another another text file called error.txt. You must use the structure given in the Q3A to complete the program. Right. So let me first show you some things, right? And then let you do it. First watch. So I'm going to open this. So you can see that they have just given the structure but nothing else uh, as i told you as soon as you open you save it as finished okay the first thing i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to find out whether i can check whether there's an at sign in the text before opening the file and reading it right so this is how i'm going to try that i'm going to write somewhere here i'm going to do something like my string <clears throat> equals if you know how to do it, uh, I mean, already, then of course you don't need to try this, right? Uh, that day in the class also, I, I showed you this. First, uh, I was checking whether I can check for an email address, I mean, at sign, right? Um, I needed to devise a method to check whether that sign is there. <clears throat> so I will have some text with an at sign. Okay, now I'm going to use an if function <clears throat> if statement. If uh, at uh, in my string, I'm going to output yes. Right, this will enable me to find a method, a technique to check whether at sign is there in a string. Okay, run it. And you can see it says yes. Now I will remove the at sign and do the check again. It doesn't show, which means this method works uh, perfectly to check whether that sign is there or not. Okay, I'll give you one minute. Can you uh, try this code and see? Just one minute, try whether this works. And if you have checked, uh, just uh, raise your, I mean, give a thumbs up, right? Quickly. Uh, you can even uh, share the code, the screenshot in the group. Just take a small screenshot and uh, share it. Yes, sir. Yeah, it gives a, gives a thumbs up. Eh? Others? <clears throat> Netma, Katum, did you try it? Katum? Uh, so still doing quick 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 right okay 
So the next thing is to open the file, right? So I'm going to remove this and <clears throat> I'm going to open the file, which is the <clears throat> email.txt, right? So make sure that you save it uh, in the same folder, right? It should be saved in the same folder so that you can open it straight away. So how do you open? You need to have a file handle, right? So I'm going to call it my file equals uh, open. And then uh, you just watch first, right? And then tell me if I'm doing something wrong, let me know. Um, then the file name, right? First, it should be the file name, email.txt. And then uh, how do you want to open this? How are we going to open this? Now, we are, we are opening files for three uh, access rights, right? Read, write, and append. In this case, how do you want to open? You had to open this one. What? What I'm going to do? We are going to uh, check all the emails, right? In this file. So, how do you want to open this? Yeah. How do you have to open this? Is it for reading or appending or writing? Yeah. Can you hear me? Uh, so appending. Appending? No. We are not going to append. See? Um, write a program to implement this. Check each email address to ensure it contains at sign. So we have to uh, extract uh, each and every email in that and see whether at sign is there. So how can it be appending? Appending is you are adding files to an existing uh, set of records. I mean, existing values. Writing is you are adding uh, values to a file newly, right? Removing the existing uh, values, you are writing newly. That's uh, writing. Appending is you are adding uh, records to the end of the file to an existing set of records. So it has to be reading, right? That's what we are going to do, right? We are going to read. Okay, so it has to be R for reading, right? <clears throat> Okay, then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a loop <clears throat> to go through all the email addresses and output only the ones which have at sign. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, a loop. Um, okay, it's called while. Uh, Oh, before that, before that, I need to read the, the line. I need to read each line, right? So I'm going to use another another variable called line or something equals my file dot read line. You know, there's a function called read line. What this will do is this will read the line by line from the op file open. From the file that we opened, it will read line by line. So you have to use the file handle and dot read line. And uh, each line will be stored uh, in a variable called line here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is <clears throat> now I, I read the first line. I read the first line, first watch, okay. And then I'm going to use a while loop, while as long as, while means as long as, as long as each line is not empty. Because I need to continue this as long as uh, the line is not empty. When the line is empty, I need to stop. Right, that's how I start uh, from the first uh, record to the last record, right? So as long as uh, line is uh, not equal to blank, I will continue to read the line. Okay, so that's why I read the first line. Uh, we read we read the first line, and then we check whether it is not blank. As long as it is not blank, we continue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is. I have read the first line, so I'm going to re, uh, print that first line. Print line 
Okay. Uh, now, in order to continue this while loop, uh, just printing the first line is not enough. I need to read the next line, right? So I need to repeat this uh, uh, line read function again inside the while loop, right? Because we have used this first reading to enter the while loop. Now I have already entered the while loop. And now I need to continue reading line by line uh, as long as it is not empty. So just printing is not enough. I need to read the next line. And then again, we go and check whether that line is empty. Uh, if it is not empty, we print the line. Understand? Is that clear? If not, let me know, okay? Right. So this will uh, this is supposed to print all the lines, all the emails, whether it there's an at sign or not. Okay. So let's see. There you go. Okay. Now you know that there is a, a default line break in the print command. That's why you are seeing a blank line, blank row here. So you can remove it uh, using the end, end equals double quotes, double quotes. You can remove that extra line, right? Uh, default line break. So I'm going to see whether I have got all the emails. Right, just uh, we'll randomly open this and check whether we have got all the email addresses. Okay, the first email address is Usa. The last email address uh, should be Nancy. Oh yes, we have Nancy. Okay, so it looks like we have got all the email addresses, right? So that's my first step. Okay, can you try the first step? So this is how you can uh, develop this step by step, right? Right, can you check this quickly, very quickly? If you need any clarification, ask. <laughs> right. So next step uh, I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to uh, uh, check is whether I can uh, print only the email addresses with the at sign. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check whether if at, I'm going to use that technique right earlier that we checked. If at in line, because line is the one which has the email address right now, right? So if at in line, only I'm going to print it, right? But whether at is there or not, we have to read the next line. So this uh, read line statement has to be out of the out of the uh, if statement, <clears throat> not inside, right? Whether there's the at sign or not, I need to read the next line. Okay, now let's see whether I get only the email addresses with that sign. There you go. Right. Okay. So once you check that, now I, I can uh, try to print the email addresses without that sign. So all you have to do is just put not operator here. Right. If not at inline. Okay. Check the indentation of the next line. This time, if not at, so the email addresses which do not have at sign. There you go. Easy, right? <clears throat> okay, right. Try the email addresses with that sign as well as uh, without that. Okay. So uh, we printed the, the email addresses without that sign, right? So the next thing is to uh, write it to this new file called error.txt, right? So what we can do is uh, we can look at the uh, structure, open the output file. So let's open the output, output file. I'm going to call this error equals uh, open. Um, now you, you notice that that file is not there, right? Which means we have to create that file. <clears throat> so either you create it in the location, just uh, create a text file, or else you can do it uh, from the code itself. Uh, that's uh, when you open it for writing. If the file is not there, it will automatically create the file. So that's the best thing, right? Mm, so let's call it the uh, error txt dot txt. That's what they have given. Right. Now this has to be open for writing. That's W, right? Then only it will be created if it is not there. Right. 
so here it will be created and this is our file handle uh, find errors and write to output okay so now i'm going to take this code over here Okay, over here, and then uh, I'm going to write to the file, right? Okay, right. So the next thing is uh, we have to write to this one, right? Mm. Okay, so instead of printing, what I can do now is instead of printing, so I'm going to come in this, I can directly write into this file. So error dot write. Error dot write, and uh, we are going to write uh, the line. This line. Instead of printing the line, now we are going to write that line. Error dot write line. Okay, we'll uh, print a line break also. So error dot write. There can be different methods, right? For the same. To do the same thing so i'm writing the line and then i'm writing a line break so that it goes to the next line and then we read the next line and check whether at sign is there if at sign is uh, not there we'll write it to the new file okay uh, one important thing that you have to do is uh, which we didn't do earlier we have to uh, close the files if you open the files we have to close the file so let's close the first file which is uh, which is my file, right? File handle in the first one is my file, dot close, and file handle in the second file is error, error dot close. Okay, so both files are closed. Uh, let's open and see. Let's run and see. Okay, you can see nothing happens, no errors. So it looks okay. Go to the place. You can see the error file is generated now. There you go. Can you see? That's what uh, they wanted, right? So you can see that they, it has already printed a, a line break, an extra line break. So if you want to remove that, uh, you have to... Uh, Uh, let's uh, remove this and see. I think they, it might uh, write to the next line. Okay, but if you want, if you are going to test it, you will need, you will need to remove everything. I ah, know we don't need to remove it because it will overwrite anyway. Because it's uh, right, it's not append. Okay, there you go. So you don't need uh, the line break. Right? It will automatically. Write a line break. The write command will automatically put a line break. So we don't need this. Right. Okay. Is that clear? That's it. That's all. Okay. Is that clear? All of you? Shahada? Tato? Netma? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you try it on your own, huh? You need to try this on your own because it's really, really tricky. Okay, now I'll give you uh, two minutes. Can you quickly check it? Right, okay. So hope you understood the Q3A, right? This, which was quite tricky. Uh, I would suggest that you redo it several times so that uh, you will get all of this uh, file handling. Right? Make sure that you practice more on file handling and sub programs. Okay. Yeah.
explain one drawback of using the merge sort algorithm to sort large data sets. Now, if you remember merge sort, it was uh, using a mechanism called uh, divide and conquer, right? It was something, uh, something like this, right? Mm. It was something like this, right? You had a list, and what you did, what you did was you divided it into half, right? Depending on the number of values, and then you went on uh, dividing <clears throat> in a recursive manner. You know, recursion is a method uh, in computer science where uh, the same sub program is uh, called by itself again and again, right? The sub program calls the sub program. So using this recursive method. Um, uh, the list was uh, divided into uh, small sub lists and ultimately it went down to uh, a state where there was only a single value in each list. <clears throat> this was called divide and then what happened was uh, we took each pair and uh, brought them into new lists uh, while sorting them. And that was called conquer. So it was uh, using a method called divide and conquer. But the technique implemented using computer science was uh, recursion, something called recursion. Right? It was just mentioned in the uh, textbook. Recursion is not taught uh, in your level. It's taught in A levels. But just remember, recursion is uh, when a sub-program calls itself over and over again, it's called recursion. So recursion is a technique we use instead of a loop, right? uh, instead of using a loop, we can use recursion uh, uh, to <clears throat> run the same thing over and over again. But when you use recursion a uh, lot of times, uh, what will happen is it will uh, overuse the memory and uh, it will need a lot of resources. So here, what actually happens is when you have a large list of uh, data, uh, since when you uh, divide and conquer, since you are going to use new lists, right? While sorting, you have to create new lists. You have to put these values into new lists and then uh, you have to join. So creating more lists on more data means that it's going to use a lot of uh, uh, memory <clears throat> and uh, storage. And uh, this will uh, slow down the whole process of uh, sorting. That's the main problem with merge sort, right? So let's write the answer like this. <clears throat> Since merge sort uses divide and conquer method using recursion um, and it uh, creates new lists when sorting and merging. <clears throat> In a large group of data, this will use more memory. Thus, slowing down the sorting process. <clears throat> Okay, so better mention uh, the recursion <clears throat> because uh, when recursion recursion is good uh, if you uh, run it uh, only a limited uh, uh, I mean only a small number of times right when recursion is uh, performed over and over again uh, a large number of times it's going to overuse the resources in the computer and it'll slow down greatly so better mention about the recursion here and also large group of data and also creating new lists uh, to 
put the sorted values and then merge right overall the result is slowing down the sorting process okay we'll do one more question this question and finish it off open uh, q3c in the code editor write a program to display the square and the cube of a number between 1 and 50 entered by the user the code must ask the user to enter a number between 1 and 50 inclusive display the number and the square of the number uh, and the cube of the number display the number square of the number and cube of the number with appropriate labels stop when the number outside the range 1 to 50 is entered okay so that must be uh, pretty easy right Okay, I'll give you uh, five minutes. You also try, and I will also try, and then let's discuss the answer, right? Okay, quickly. Yeah? Atom, uh, Shahada, how about how about you guys finish? How far you finished? Sir, so I'm almost done. Almost done, right? Okay, great. Atom. So almost done. Once once you finish, uh, you share the code and uh, the group. I'll have a look at it. Okay. Okay. Uh, you haven't shared, no? Finish both of you. 